Here we go. Sunday Plays brought to you by Odds Checker. We are primarily going to talk about college hoops with a little NASCAR, NHL, and the NBA All-Star Game. We have brought in two of the best in the business. We have Micah Roberts, former Las Vegas Sportsbook Director, and we have Kenny White, former odds maker for the Las Vegas Line. I'm Alex, your host for Odds Checker today. All right, guys, two days in a row. Let's give the people what they want. Micah, we're going to start with you in the Big Ten Conference. Michigan Wolverines, they're going to Wisconsin to take on the Badgers. Badgers minus two and a half, 139 and a half. Yeah, I'm going with Michigan here, and I like the role that they're on right now, playing extremely well, not quite at the same level they were last year, a magical season, but they are getting close, and Juwan Howard's doing a good job coaching. Uh, three and one their last four games, they beat Iowa at Iowa on Thursday, and 10 days ago they beat Purdue. Two pretty good wins there for the program that they're showing that they're on the uh, right track. And in the three wins, the last three wins, 41% uh, or less uh, – field goal percentage they've allowed. So defensively, they're getting after 31% allowed on the three-point line. Not bad either, but it's a different Michigan team from the one we saw that was sluggish uh, the first half of the season. I look for them to pick things up. They're kind of on the fence right now. The last ESPN bracketology I saw, they were um, the last four in. So they're not in yet. So they need a couple concrete uh, wins against a couple good opponents and Wisconsin is, is that team I mean they don't do they're not a great defensive team not a great shooting team they just don't make a lot of mistakes and they're at home and they've been very good however they haven't covered their last four home games that's something to take uh, Michigan with the points here and two and six ATS their last eight overall and uh, five and three straight up their last eight with losses at home to Rutgers at Illinois and Michigan State so I think there's an opening here. We saw that the loss to Rutgers, Rutgers uh, not very good on the road, as good as they are at home. Uh, 20 and five, Wisconsin is very impressive and the covering just hasn't been there lately, 10, 10 and three at home. So I'm gonna look for them to go. I'm gonna go on Michigan's defense to out defense Wisconsin on their own home court. All right, let's go Wolverines. I know you have another one, another 1 p.m. Game Big East Providence at Butler. Providence is a three point favorite. Total is 128 and a half. What do you like here? Yeah, this would be a big win for Butler struggling. Uh, I think they realize that they're not going in the tournament unless they win the Big East tournament. And I just don't see them doing that. Uh, I've lost four of their last six games. Uh, not playing extremely well. And and the thing about the uh, Providence, they come off a loss, loss to Villanova. 3-0 uh, and o this year coming off a loss straight up after. And 5-0 and o in their last five. And 12-2 and two in their last 14 after an ATS loss. And the thing about them, 6-1 and one away, true road games. Very impressive. I love teams that do well on the road. And their defense is better on the road. Only 39% allowed shooting that is impressive for a team that just gets after it on the road and i think they're going to continue to keep going espn has them a number three seed right now they might be able to improve upon that and move forward and uh, i also like marquette plus two but i'll save that one for uh tomorrow okay thank you Micah. all right kenny we're moving to you you have a 2 p.m game in missouri valley conference missouri state bears at northern iowa northern iowa iowa minus two and a half total 143 yeah, give me the dog in this game. I'm going to I'm going to take the Bears. They're playing really good basketball right now. Uh Dana Altman's team has been good strong on the road. As Micah said he likes likes teams that play well on the road. I do as well. I like good defensive teams, well-coached teams that get it done on the road. Dana Altman 9 and 4 ATS this year. They do have revenge as well. They lost 85-84 by 1 on January 8th at home. So a very close game. And Northern Iowa hosting this is 11 and four in conference. So is Missouri State. These two are tied for second place, a half game behind Loyola Chicago. Uh, so the winner of this will move into a first place tie. Northern Iowa this year at home, just five and six ATS in their home games. Conference stats Missouri State, the number one offensive team in the conference, number four defensively. Northern Iowa right now, number three on offense, number six on defense. So I've got the team who's better offensively, better defensively, plays well on the road with revenge, taking points here. Go Bears. All right. And you have another one, Temple at Cincinnati. The Bearcats are six-point favorites at home, total 135. Yeah, American Athletic game. Uh, 
Uh, Temple seven and five in the conference. Cincinnati is seven and six. Temple actually has a half game lead in the conference. I do have Cincinnati rated slightly higher than Temple. I'm taking the points with the Temple Owls here, plus the six. Uh, it's a team that has played great defense all year long. Uh, they're the second best defense in the conference. Uh, they're 14 and nine ATS on the season. So Aaron McKee's team has been a moneymaker for the year. Wes Miller for Cincinnati came in from uh, uh, my one of my favorite schools, North Carolina Greensboro. And I, I truly do like Wes Miller as a head coach. But in his first year in Cincinnati, boy, they got off to a fast start. And a lot of times that's that's all that is is emotion, playing for a new coach. Things have settled down, kind of gone opposite a little bit as of late. Uh, the Bearcats are 2-5 and five ATS their last seven games. Uh, they are coming off a win over Wichita State after back-to-back -back losses. So uh, the Temple Owls coming off their best win of the entire season. Uh, they beat an SMU team 64-57 in their last game. So first time they played January 25th, uh, Temple did win the game 61-58. There's no revenge, but I feel like this game is going to be very similar to the first one in a very close, tight, low-scoring battle. So plus six points at a premium here. Let's see. Can you go three for three with under underdogs? What do you have in the Horizon League? I'm looking at the Northern Kentucky at Oakland game. Oakland minus six and a half, total 139. Yeah, most of the time, you know, it's either a total or maybe a dog, but most of the time it's a total. But it will be a three-dog day for me on Sunday. Um, I love Northern Kentucky here, plus the six and a half. Uh, Darren Horn's team is playing great basketball right now. Nine and two ATS their last 11 games. Uh, they're 11 and six in the conference. A half a game behind Oakland right now. They did beat Oakland earlier. Uh, two weeks ago, they beat them on February 4th. 87-78 in an overtime game. So expecting another very close, low-scoring game. Uh, Oakland right now, 1-8 and eight ATS their last nine. So I feel like I have teams going in opposite directions. Uh, and the, the bonus for me in this game is Northern Kentucky is playing so well at 9-2 and two ATS. They lost their last game to Detroit. So they're off a very bad loss. They can make up that loss with a win over Oakland and get back here in the standings ahead of Oakland. So a big game. I think it's a lot of points for uh, for Northern Kentucky here. All right. We're going to move to NHL. I have two plays today. Yesterday, I had an over Colorado Buffalo over. I was going to stick with Buffalo, but that total Buffalo and Columbus is six and a half. So I'm looking at a different one. I like Edmonton Oilers and Minnesota over six. The Wild are 28 and 17 to the over. They're averaging 3.78 goals per game, third highest in the league behind Florida and Colorado. Edmonton gives up an average of 3.2 goals, but they're also averaging 3.3 per game. And they have the top scorer in the league, Leon Sideleon. He is leading the league with 35 goals this year. And him and Connor McDavid, they are in a three-way tie for most points at 68. So I like over six, Oilers and Wild. I also like Vegas Golden Knights, minus 165. Go to Odds Checker. I think that's the best odds I found. Minus 155, actually, at Sugar House. Make sure you get the best number. They lost three in a row. They are now two points behind Calgary. And the two teams behind them, Edmonton and Kings, are slowly creeping up to them. They need this game. Their rivals. This is going to be a great game. Max Pacioretty, he scored two goals in their overtime loss to the Kings. And as much as Mark Stone is the captain and the leader, when Max Pacioretty is hot, the Knights win. I like the Golden Knights here, minus 155. Now we're going to get a little NASCAR. Let's send it to Micah. Yes, we've got the 64th running of the Daytona 500, the first official race of the NASCAR season. And the first time we get to see the brand new next generation car on a super speedway. Now, remember the old cars, lead changes all over the places. I have a feeling that's not going to be the case. I think you're going to see the Fords do extremely well in the draft. I think we're going to see multiple uh, drafting trains, like a four car Ford train running up front for a lot of the race, not a lot of action side by side. I did not see any of that in the practices or in the Thursday uh, twin duels that four drivers each won. So uh, something to look at here, you know, you got the favorite like Kyle Larson. He's never had a top five 
at Daytona or Talladega, if that tells you something. He's so great everywhere else, but this has been his Achilles heel over his career. I think you can do a uh, bet against him not to win the race, not to finish in the top 10. In fact, his over-under is 10 and a half. He can get over that for even money. I got a few other plays here. A lot of them are Fords. There's some good bets, uh, 11 to 1 with Logano, 12 to 1 with Blaney are a couple of my favorites. Uh, but Denny Hamlin, $1.20 against Chase Elliott. Toyota versus Chevy, we're okay there. Ryan Blaney, the guy I like to win the race, is plus 105 against Kyle Larson. He's so overrated just because of winning the championship last season, but this is not his type of track. I've got the number of Fords to finish in the top 10 over three and a half for $1.90, but I think there's probably going to be five or six there. So see if you can check around numbers like that. Uh, Joey Logano under 10 and a half finish position, laying a dollar 20. And Blaney under 10 and a half plus 105. I think the Fords are going to win, so you can bet that as well. And um, that's all I got. I'm excited to watch this. Hopefully it's not as boring as I think it will be. I don't think it's going to be side to side like we've seen over the last couple of years. So they'll do some tinkering and they'll be ready for Talladega to put on a better show. But for now, it's NASCAR. I can smell smell the fuel and the thunder from the engine 670 horsepower i'm ready to go alex let's do it i like it adding the nascar into our plays kenny why don't you take us to the all-star game in the nba yeah i'm going to play the total here in this nba all-star game and i'm going to go under the total right now 321 and a half check odds checker out before you make a bet get the best line go to oddschecker.com check your state every book that is a legal book and has an app in that state or a, a standalone We'll have numbers on there, so you can get the best number at oddschecker.com, and it is free. Uh, this this uh, NBA All-Star game, uh, again, it's an Elam ending, and that Elam ending is a target score, be greatest invention ever for basketball. That means every game with an Elam ending is won on a game-winning shot. Uh, it may not be the game winner by, by a point, but whoever makes that last shot to hit that target number wins the game. You don't have to foul. You have to play defense late. So first three quarters are regular basketball. Fourth quarter is the Elam ending. To give you the Elam ending, basically, let's say the score was 100 to 90 at the end of three quarters, which I wish it, which, wish it was because we'd have an easy under. But that 190, they, they tack on 24 points to the team that's leading. The target score then becomes 124. Whoever hits 124 first wins the game. So the team that has 90 would have to score 34 points to get there. So there is a possibility of, 57 points being scored if the dog is down 10. If it's down, if the dog's down 20, there's actually, you know, a, uh, a much higher uh, number could be scored. 67 points could be scored in that fourth quarter. But most likely the team that's winning the game will probably end up winning in the long run, obviously. Uh, so my, my numbers crunching the last uh, four years, which the game has been played like this the last four years, 84 points has been the average quarter, first, second, or third. So if you multiply 84 by three, that's 252. The highest Elam ending is 55. That comes out to 307. So I've got a little bit of leeway for a higher Elam ending or, you know, a couple more points here on a quarter here or there. So uh, I'm going to go under the 321 and a half. There you have it. That's our college basketball, NHL, NASCAR, and NBA All-Star picks for the day. Thank you, Micah. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I'm Alex for Odds Checker. We'll see you next time.